Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another RC Pilots Lounge. This is number 13, and the uh, long-awaited, highly anticipated interview with Josh Scott. I've been dying to get this one done and work it out. Uh, we've been trying hard behind the scenes to uh, work out our technical difficulties, and we have. And we're going to launch this one. This is a premiere. We're hanging out here with you Saturday uh, in the chat. This is going down right now. Uh, I'm going to introduce Josh a little bit and then let him rip on his initiative. The The main reason I wanted to have him over here um, this week for the show is to talk about the memoirs of World War II initiative that he's been up to and ask him some questions about it because I think it's super fantastic. And um, so many of us um, definitely understand and can can get with the the messaging here with this initiative so josh what's going on how's it going glad to very be very well thanks for coming we worked it out finally finally yes uh another week would slip by if we didn't just uh stay stay adamant about it right. so thanks for coming by all these guys here that hang out in the uh at rc pilots lounge definitely have been looking forward to this as well and I'll speak for all of them when I thank you profusely for taking on this initiative. And, and those of you who are just hopping in and you don't know who Josh Scott is, uh, we'll talk about some of that. And I got some questions too. I want to know why um, and how this really came upon him and, yeah. and it had to have touched him to get him to work so hard to create these uh, basically documentaries these fantastic documentaries which catalog the stories of veterans who are still with us yeah. to this day so anyway he knows more about it than we do but he comes from flight test and we got so i want i have some questions about that as well because um it's just so fun that you're doing this and where we all come from big planes lead to little ones and little ones lead to big ones <laughs> and here we are so Josh, good job. We all thank you. And if you haven't seen any of these videos yet, I want to have links in the description. Subscribe, support, check this out. These are top-notch quality documentaries uh, that really do a good job telling these stories. So Josh, you just dropped one on Friday. What's your what's your latest one about? Yeah, so the one that uh, just came out on Friday is uh, the subject or the, the veteran that recover is uh, Herschel Woodrow Williams. Uh, he's better known as Herschel Woody Williams, uh, but he is a Medal of Honor recipient. He's actually the last living World War II Medal of Honor recipient from the Pacific Theater. Uh, so this episode is is all about him and specifically the events that took place uh, that awarded him the Medal of Honor. That's really cool. And, and we... Um... I, I can't wait to uh, it's out already, but I yes. can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Um, I watched the other day we spoke and I had just spent the whole day absorbing all these videos and I was very moved emotionally, actually. And um, and and I was telling you uh, the stories are familiar. We all are very familiar with some of these um, happenings in a very kind of vague way. Yeah. But hearing the specific stories from each one of these uh, veterans is it really just brings it to some kind of different reality. And, and there's always something new to learn and hear from it yeah. and some kind of twist. Um, yeah. Wow. I can't wait to watch the Herschel one, but they've all been really, really, really cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's something that we thought about uh, early on as kind of a concern was how many times can we tell the story of Pearl Harbor or how many times can we talk about the Battle of the Bulge? Um, because especially the veterans that we've dealt with so far, uh, being from the United States uh, and specifically close to my area where I live, a lot of them experienced the same events. So it was always kind of a... a, a a concern of ours, like, you know, how, how many times, when is it going to get old when we talk about the Battle of the Bulge again? But the thing that we quickly found out is that every single person, even though they might have experienced the same event, they perceived it differently. And they had different experiences during that event. And you can, you can tell the same, talk about the same event a million times, but 
it's from a different perspective every time. So it's new. It, you get a new a new take on it every time. And, you know, I, I learn something different about it every single time. I think we always have, you know, like uh, uh, your kind of go to mental picture um, when you're familiar with the story or you're familiar with an event. But hearing it from somebody else's perspective automatically sheds a new light on it, you know, and, and kind of paints a, a different picture in your mind. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, absolutely. And you, you really put it well just there. And guys, you, you have to go watch some of these. They're, they're really, I mean, many documentaries, like PBS quality, like really well done, like super good production quality. I just very, very impressed with them. And I mean, those, you, you could just really listen to those guys talk yeah. even in a lo-fi kind of way, sure. like this show goes on, but it's so well put together. You narrate, you come up with all the copy, the text, the questions, yeah. and, and it, who helps you? do this is it just you no um no my so my wife is an enormous help first of all by just allowing me to take the time to do it but she's also kind of my administrator she keeps me organized and on task and everything like that and i am not much of a people person so a large portion of i I, I, believe me i'm not a large (laughs) portion a large portion of this is um is getting out there and talking to people that that don't know me and I, and I don't have a previous relationship with them. And basically almost like a salesman, like convincing these people that I'm not some creep. And, you know, I actually like, you know, I value you and your story and and here's why I want to tell it and all that stuff. So she really helps me a lot with that. Um, and then I also have uh, Christian McLean who, um, some people might remember from flight test. Um, he used to be one of their video editors and uh so he's the guy who makes everything look good uh he goes with me on every interview and and he's he's the cameraman on those shoots and then uh he and i sit down together and edit these videos um i typically have um everything written out um that i want to see um after we do the interview i'll go back and look over the footage and just kind of watch the interview over again and write down, you know, okay, I want to make sure I want to include this part and this story and this one here. And then I put them all in order. Uh, Usually chronological order is best, but really like the way that like sets up this story in the best way. Um, I'll go through and, and kind of find, find the, the narrative in it. And so that's where I write the narration for you know, that kind of like sets up their story. Um, some of these guys are, are, you know, well, they're all, well, they're all up there in, in age. And some of them um, are not uh, quite the way they maybe used to be when it comes to um, expressing their story. So I write to kind of supplement that at times if necessary. Um, and so I do the writing, uh, go through and find uh, public domain uh, footage or or photos that, that support the story as well, the music, and then Christian and I sit down together and, and just kind of piece it all together. He's a, he's a wizard with uh, Premiere, uh, the editing software, so yes. he's, he's great at that. And he also brings a lot uh, creatively uh, to the process as well. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, like how we put each of these things. You guys have to go watch this stuff. Um, you'll want to binge watch it like I did. You'll you'll watch every one of them if you have a chance. And it wouldn't surprise me to see it on, on the network somewhere sometime. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so good. Um, and also one thing too, just like everything, aviation or anything worthwhile, um, there's a community aspect as well. Um, and before I get on this tangent, uh, I just was thinking while you were talking. Um, so the first few must have been the toughest ones, like to pitch as far as like back to that salesman mentality. Like now you have a body of work that you can show them and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's obvious like how the merit of what you're doing. Um, so, so good. <laughs> so yeah, good. That's that's for sure. True. Now it's nice because we, we cut together a little, you know, minute and a half long uh, teaser thing that kind of gives you the gist of, you know, shows clips of a few of the different videos and gives you the gist of it. And so that helps a lot because while I'm like tripping over my words and rambling on about, you know, what, what we are and what we do, I'm like, you know, I just watch this and it, it does so much. Much it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's really magical. Um, so 
so also too, um, were, are you able? So you're interviewing fellas that are uh, have been local somewhat yeah. to you, right? Right. But the goal is to go as far as it'll take you. Yes. Um, and it takes donor support to do that. Yes. Um, every video uh, there's a there's a call out to Patreon, and and if somebody doesn't know how to use that, um, not everybody. Uh, some of us are just lucky enough to be able to check our history in YouTube to see what we watched and were obsessing over the other day. Yeah. So if, if Patreon is, isn't is going to work for somebody, uh, are there other ways that we can contribute to okay. your initiative to um, help bring you to these people to capture their stories while they're still around? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as like financially goes, we're we're looking into uh, different things like uh, grants and, and and sponsorships and things like that to help out with that. Um, for right now, as far as you know, uh, crowdfunding goes, uh, Patreon is what we have is what we have going. Um, but other ways that are actually a really big support, um, probably the most uh, beneficial is just sharing the videos and we intentionally um, make the videos around 10 minutes long um, because we feel like that's a good amount of time to do justice to each veteran but also it's shareable and people can you know sit down and and hopefully be drawn in by this story and give you know give 10 minutes of their time to watch it and then share it with somebody else um, so that really is, is going to be a major benefit because uh, if I can speak candidly, um, a lot that we're, that we're starting to see is that, um, people who are possible funders of, of this kind of a project, they want to see, um, they, they want to see view count and they want to see that people are engaging in, in these, in these videos and sharing them and things like that. So really like sharing, sharing the videos is, is a huge deal. Um, and then also making us aware of veterans that are out there. Um, you know, when I first started doing this, we, we started the, the film series, we launched it this past May. Um, but I've been going around interviewing World War II veterans for about two and a half years. When I first started doing it, it was it was tough to find them at first because uh, there's not a lot of them around. Um, but the best way that I found to to find them was to just like kind of put my feelers out there on social media or whatever and say, "Hey, this is something that I'm wanting to do. Do you know anyone who served during World War II? You know, maybe a grandfather, a great uncle, whatever. You know." Um, so yeah, another another way that people can can really support is by reaching out to us. Uh, through our website, which is memoirsofworldwar2.com, um, and and sharing with us, you know, hey, I know of a veteran that you guys might want to feature on that. So, so that's that's, that's great. That's just what I was going to ask you. What's your preferred way to be contacted if somebody does have a a lead for yeah. you? And, and just so everybody knows, you're in the Ohio right. area. Yeah. Um. How? What's the farthest you've gone to? Uh, uh so far. Uh, not too far. Um, let me think. I think Pennsylvania. We, we've oh, wow. interviewed some in Pennsylvania, um, Southern Ohio. I'm trying to think, maybe New York. I'm trying to remember where all we've been. But uh, yeah, so far it's been mostly local. All all of the episodes um, that we have, with the exception of the one uh, that just released, that um, Herschel. He's from West Virginia. Um, but all the other ones have been semi-local within two or three hours of us so awesome and we're we're uh, working out um you know we're working out schedules to um to do more traveling but you know with that we want to try to get a a few veterans you know in an area if we're, if we're going to drive you know several hours um or or possibly fly uh we want to you know try to get as many veterans in that location as we can that makes a lot of sense. And then you can release that over time and yeah, more bang yeah. for your buck for the effort of, of getting the content. The main, the main thing is is to get the content right now because we're yeah. against time. Right. Um, and, you know, right now we release one episode a month. So um, we have enough content saved up right now to carry us uh, for a year. Um, wow. But uh, the main thing is, is to get to the stories because we can continue to release the stories that these, the, 
I'm confident that the stories will never uh, lose their power. Uh, so it doesn't matter if if we release a story tomorrow or ten years from now. It's I mean possibly it could be even more powerful several years down the road when when sadly there are none of these guys left. You oh know, wow! To, yes, to look back um, into the past in, in, in a way. And, and, and open up that chapter of history in, in a very real and visceral way. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, right now we're, uh, you know, we're, we're on a schedule of releasing one episode a month, but, um, and we'll keep that. And hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to up that a little bit to maybe, you know, two a month or once a week even. But the main thing right now is, is to get to the veterans and get their stories before it's too late. Did you hear that, guys? He, he's 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 got to get him while he can. Let's yeah. help him out. Um, I think that's great. What's your fate? Um, what's your best way to deliver leads to you? Just yeah. anywhere you can be found. I mean, what's your favorite? Like uh, yeah, Facebook, direct message on Instagram, the website. Yeah, what's well, the I think best you way? See how good I am or am not at responding to Facebook messages, um, but that is a way. Um, I did, <laughs> Um, the best way is to go to our website, which is Memoirs of World War II, and that's WWII. So Memoirs of WWII.com, and there's a contact form on the website that you can get in contact with us. But I'm always, you know, um, always periodically checking on uh, the uh, Facebook messages and then Instagram as well. Um, when I say periodically, I mean probably like once or twice a day. I guess that's I guess that's kind of a lot, but. Somehow I just like no. That's I, that's I had trouble getting this set up. That, that might be a lot to some. Like I'm, I'm absolutely. Um, I might as well be a teenager on social media. <laughs> but that's how it's done. Yeah, it, it's sure. right now, 2018, yep. online. I mean, it's it's still a, a wide open frontier that a lot of impact can be made through. And guys like you and me can can do it we you don't have to be coca-cola or doritos to make it happen which is right. which is still so so cool um josh i love what you do i love that these stories are getting um archived because there is such a uh, facet to this history we've never really had the opportunity to hear and it would be an absolute shame if somebody didn't go around and put it in a time capsule so i want to thank you again yeah. for what you're doing thank and you. i want to ask you this is the dig right. where wh what motivated you to get on this journey yourself yeah. like where did it come from for you what was the spark yeah um you know I, it's the subject of world war ii has always been interesting to me um and there's something about like that era too not not because of the war but like just something about that era that i'm like if i could live any other time i don't know why is i don't know if it's the music or even just the i don't know something something about it like i if i could pick I get it, it. Time, you know um the <laughs> but uh so it's always been an interest of mine um but somewhere along the way uh i think i had seen an interview with the World War II veteran, and he it was it was at the time a current interview, and so he was he was older, um, and I just thought, man, like it would be so cool to get to sit down with these guys and talk about it because I I think that like a lot of people feel the same way that I did, where you don't really like stop and think about how big of an event it was, um, how much it affected the world, and still continues to. Um, and, and really think about like, oh, like this isn't just like something that happened way, way long ago in history, but these guys are actually still here, you know, still able to share their story, still able to talk to them. And so I kind of had like, uh, a revelation, I guess you could say that, uh, I was like, man, I, I could do that. Why, why am I not out there doing that? You know? So it started out as just, you know, I just want to get out there and, and talk to these guys um, and then I thought, well, I mean, social media is a great tool. I can, you know, you know, take the pictures and write, write, you know, a summary of their, of their experience and share that. And it just kind of like all snowballed from there. And people had been telling me for probably over a year, man, you, you need to like do videos of this stuff and all. And, I, and I'm like, I would love to, but I don't have the equipment. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to like editing videos and all that stuff. Um, so then when Christian, um, he, he approached me. 
um, about a year ago and said, Hey, what do you think about like us getting together and like filming these, you know, these interviews and, and doing something with it. And so that's kind of, that's kind of where it all started. And, uh, you know, it was, a uh, we spent probably like a good three or four months editing our first three episodes and it was trial and error. Like it, it, it was, you know, there was very many times where I, I came home, um, from, from his house where we edit just feeling like this isn't working. This, this is just not going to work. Um, but taking a step back from it, looking at it a different way, um, you know, has, has proven to be a, a great creative, uh, thing to do. And really in any aspect, sometimes you just have to get to that point and be like, I got to step away from this for a minute so I can look at it from a different perspective. Um, and we got our first three cut together and we felt good about it. We felt good about the format um, and so, yeah, from there, I can't say that it's been smooth sailing because every story is different. Every veteran is different. Um, the one that we released in, uh, for October, um, was, uh, the medic, uh, he was a medic with the, uh, the 94th and that was a tough ep episode to put together. Um, it was just I felt like we weren't hitting like the emotional beats like we could or or building tension like we could and just like not doing a good job of, of supporting his story. And I thought this, this is it. This is where like our luck has run out. But um, we ended up, you know, just taking looking at it from a different perspective and it came together um, a large part uh, thanks to Christian. And, and just like, you know, it's nice to work with somebody um, who who also has a creative eye, but not the same one that you do, you know? Um, so they see things differently, but, um, uh, he really had some good insight and helped me pull that together. And now it's like one of my favorite episodes. They're all so good. Remind me of the medic. I, I, I remember the stories. Which yeah. fellow was he? Was, was he, uh, did he have a blue shirt on? <laughs> he had like a greenish shirt on. Yeah. Like what was his name? Uh, Mel oh, the oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. totally remember the medic. He's, he's the one that, that almost stepped on the bouncing Betty. Yes, as that he story. So, as he so eloquently put it, blew his ding-dongs off. Um, which wow. I, <laughs> but that yeah, dude is a so, baller, dude. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I was so blown away by his fortitude. And it's just like you. one thing we always forget, right? Because yeah. we know these guys and we've met them in our life. And you always – there, there's this reverence for them because by the time we meet them, they, they've got some age on them. Yeah. They were 19, 20, yeah. 21, 22 doing this stuff. I mean, goodness sakes, just the fortitude from these guys. Um, yeah, that guy was baller and he had, uh, you just have to uh, plug through it, you know, yeah. trudge on through. Yeah. Because some of the stuff him. these guys saw was enough to put you in a corner and fetal position. Oh, yeah. But they just, you just keep on working. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um, I love I love all these, but the the other one that really stands out to me too is uh, I forget his name, but he was the it was the one who he said, "Lord, if you get me home, I'll yeah. serve you the rest of my life." Yeah. Um, yes. wow. Just yeah. rip your heart out. I mean, just good <laughs> stuff, man. So it's, uh, so it's one of the uh, like uh, the tests, I guess, when I when we're working through these edits. Um, I'll show it to my wife, you know, as we're making progress through each video. And um, if she if she doesn't tear up at the end of it, then I know I haven't done my job properly and I need to, like, go back and figure out what I what I did wrong. The story. Everyone is a this is us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And the, the thing is, is that I'm I'm proud that I never have and never will have to embellish the story. Um, what we do is we use tools like the, you know, my narration or the music or, um, you know, uh, archive footage to supplement the fact that you're, that you weren't there. He was there. She, you know, she was there, but we weren't there. And so a lot of times, like you can hear someone tell the story and, some of these guys just tell it so nonchalant um, that it's almost like, wait, hang on a second. What, what did he say? You know? Um, so I feel like my job as the director or producer is um, to 
kind of draw your attention to the weight and the gravity of what they're saying, you know, um, whether it's uh, a good memory or, or something that's, that's tough for them to talk about. Um, but man, they, it's just, you know, like you said, you can't imagine like what, what they went through at such a young age and to have to just accept that as well, this is what we do now, you know, this is, this is where we are and this is what we have to do. It's crazy. Do you think that some of these guys and gals um, get a, a great deal of solace from ha- from being able to tell the story and double question? And do you think that now I, I can kind of imagine that maybe maybe they were tight lipped about it for a while, but then as they get, as age comes on them, yeah, it, it becomes some kind of uh, therapy. Mm-hmm. And also connection to, um, I mean, can you imagine not having anyone who wanted to hear the story and, and or, you know, really want to get it or try to and then finally having like open ears to hear you? Like, yeah, I think it would feel amazing. Um, uh, I think all those guys enjoy uh, talking to you, it seems like, too. Um, yeah. Even if it is bittersweet um, m- memories, they, I, they they get it. Yeah. <laughs> they I, seem I can to. tell you. I can tell you, I've never had any of them regret sharing their story with me. Um, we have had some who have just said no, um, that they don't want to talk about it. And, you know, we, we respect that. Um, and we, we've we had many who um, have shared with us that they have never talked about it before. And um, I'll never forget, somewhere on my, on my Instagram page, um, I posted audio of one of the interviews that I did. And, um, he, he says in, in the audio, you can listen to it. He's, he's talking about, uh, something that happened in the Pacific. He was on a, he was on a ship and there was a, uh, there was a Japanese plane, a fighter plane coming in, uh, probably, uh, as a kamikaze. And at the last minute, um, one of our Hellcats shot it down and uh, just barely saved the ship from, from getting potentially destroyed. And he, he just starts to break down and weep as he's telling the story. And uh, the interesting thing about it was that it was a, from our perspective, from the, from the American perspective, it had a happy ending, but he's thinking about the pilot of this, of this Japanese fighter plane. And he started, he starts to weep as he's telling me the story and then he says, I've, I've never told anybody about this before. And he says, but it feels good to talk about it. And he's oh. like, maybe it'll help me feel better. And I'm so glad that I, one, was there for that. And, and two, like, got to, to capture that moment because there are so many of them that they've been holding this in for 70 some years. And, you know, the same can be said about veterans of of any war you know um there's so many out there that they're, they're holding it in and i don't know enough to say whether or not like that's a universal cure or that's that's going to be therapy for every veteran to talk about it but i know that for a lot of them it is and um i think that you know, I don't want to sound like I'm patting myself on the back that like, hey, like I'm out here doing this and this 92 year old man that's been holding this stuff in for 70 years finally got peace because he talked to me. But I, I want to be maybe an inspiration to others to to go out there and talk with veterans. Um, you know, we have to be respectful. You can't you don't want to draw things out of them. And, and I'm always respectful to make sure that they're aware that I'm not here to hear cool war stories. You know, I want, I want to hear your perspective, how, how your perspective, how it affected you emotionally and everything like that. Um, but I think, um, if I can be, if this project can be an inspiration for people, um, to, to go and, and just lend a listening ear to, to these veterans, um, it can really, it can really do a lot for, for us. It can do a lot. Um, we can learn so much from it. Um, and it can it can be it can be helpful for them as well. And and even even if even the ones that aren't dealing with like, um, you know, PTSD or like they need to talk about it to like get this stuff off their chest. 
a lot of them just like to know that somebody cares, you know, they served, they, they, yes. gave, they gave up so much of their time and, and potentially their lives. And a lot of them limbs, they, they gave so much. So it, it, they just appreciate to know that somebody cares about, you know, their story and, and what they did. I, I, again, I want to applaud you. And, and I think it also can serve, um, and time is of the essence, but but it is a good model for other um, stories to be told from other conflicts as well. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said, because because there are uh, so many. And I think what really brings it to some kind of tangible reality is is the fact that you strip away the history book of it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's private Joe. I mean, it's it's Corporal Susie. It, they've got their own personal spin um, on the story, and it, it just it's so good. Uh, and you're talking about guys who uh, are are very eloquent, and some who are maybe uh, hindered and don't want to talk about it. But the, you know, th- there's one fellow you had that I think he likes talking about it. Um, it's it's a fun thing for him in a way. I mean, uh, what was his name? It, it was he's the guy who said um, we all became a man that day. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. A, it was the Pearl Harbor fellow. Yes. What was wasn't it? What was his name? Adoni. Adoni yeah. Calvin. Yeah. Y- yeah. And yeah. it seemed like, and I could tell this. I just put it up, put, picked it up out of the context in which was given in some of these clips that he does some speaking engagements and and things like that which um not everybody's got the audacity to do that but adoni yeah oh yeah that, he was fun he yeah, was he's, he's i told my wife he was the most um intimidating for me from day one when i called him uh because he's just so straightforward and just like no nonsense kind of guy you know and um, so from from the first day when I called him, I, like I said, I'm I'm like not good with like social skills. Um, so like I, calling people on the phone when I've never talked to them before is, is like a nightmare for me. Um, so, yeah, I was I was shaken when I when I called him. <laughs> but, um, he uh, he was very gracious when I when we finally set up the interview and everything. Um, but he's a fax guy. Um, he he he's more interested in giving you historical facts than telling his own personal story. And he knows every detail about Pearl Harbor and then about the USS West Virginia that he, that he served on. Um, He was in uh, the intelligence and he still like will not talk about the kind that he delivered. Um, He's still holding on to that, which I think is, I think that says a lot about, uh, you know, the, the values of the greatest generation. Um, But uh, when, so every time, that we wrap up these videos, um, I always burn a couple copies on DVD to give to the veterans, you know, and uh, it's always a little nerve wracking taking it to them and sitting down with them and letting them watch it because I'm like, I hope I did everything right, you know, because I don't claim to be a historian. Um, I, I, I know a lot about the war, but I'm learning more and more all the time, but I'm definitely not a historian. So I'm like, I hope I got everything right. I hope I didn't like, you know, misunderstand their story and like spin it in a way that wasn't accurate. Um, and he was the most, I was the most terrified when I, when I took it to him because he's so like facts and he's like just straightforward. Like he, he's the kind of guy that does not filter what he thinks or what he wants to say. He'll just tell you straight up, you know, but, uh, he, he loved it. He loved it. And uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that all of them so far, um, have just absolutely loved it. And man, just, it's another, it's just another level of this is why, this is why I'm doing this. Um, when I see the gratitude that they have, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm, I've given back just a fraction of what they've given to us, you know? Um, but I'm always, you know, we want, we want to, we want to get more views on the videos and we want a bigger following, not so we can be famous, but so that people can hear these stories. Um, but views are no views and followers and no followers, just like seeing the gratitude in, in their faces, um, and the things that they, that they share with me when, when we show them these videos, 
um, that's a million times over worth all the effort and, and every ounce of, of it. You, you're definitely on to something, huh? Um, he he was the uh, the musician, yeah. Right? He mm -hmm. was the musician who who uh, all those musicians got um, what's the word corralled, so to say, yeah, to be code readers, yeah, right, yeah. code crackers and stuff, yeah. Because they Goodness figured sakes. that if these guys can sit down and read a piece of music and be able to play it right there on the spot that that skill would translate to reading codes and, and being able to read and write and break codes. Um, Cause Amazing. you have to be pretty quick, uh, pretty quick witted to do that. So. That's so fun. So good. Again, good job guys. If you haven't checked these out, go check them out. The links are going to be all over the place. Uh, consider supporting them on Patreon. However, go to the website, follow on Instagram if you do Instagram, and definitely subscribe and hit the bell on the memoirs of World War II uh, YouTube channel so you'll be notified whenever new videos drop and engage with those videos as well. Yeah. Um, you're wearing a shirt right now. Can we get yeah. those somewhere? Yes, you can. Uh, um, we have them uh, at the website. On the website? Yeah. Cool. It's, we have two two different designs but the one is the one is going pretty fast it has a p51 in the background which may be of more interest to your crowd um but uh yeah so there's the so there's this one and then there's the uh, p51 version of this shirt uh but that one's going pretty fast but yeah both of them are available on the website that's very good that's that's cool uh how much uh right now they're uh 20 bucks but uh i think we might do a sale really soon um, in honor of Veterans Day, which oh, is sure. up, just a couple weeks here. So, if you sell out, are you going to do more or, or new designs yeah. or what? Yeah, you know what? We, um, I was, I was actually kind of surprised, like how how um, popular the uh, the P fifty one shirts were. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're always we're always going to be getting more of them. So nice. Save me an extra large. Okay, P fifty one. I'll buy it. All right. Um, so, Josh, good stuff. And we're going to have links all over the place in this video um, description so you guys can find it. Um, so, yeah, I, I was uh, so just I'm, I'm I'm still trying to get a hold of the spark. What got this going when, when you were were you a young man? Was it um, for me? Aviation brought it all to me. Yeah. Um, it, it was an airplane thing. I grew up. Uh, in the backseat of a T6. And I just kind of thought every kid grew up that way. So aviation was one of those just things mm -hmm. um, like, like sports is for, you know, other, other dads and sons uh, airplanes were. And, and then the um, noticing the service and all that went on. Yeah. Um, hot rods are my favorite uh, world war two planes. So, so that's what really, drove my attention to the, the everything that surrounded that um yeah. so and and then once you get older it all assimilates as part of the whole uh and you can appreciate these guys experience and right. um i've known some uh, wasps and we did air shows every year so that's where it comes from for me were you um i guess in my mind i assumed uh that I just assumed uh, that that flight test and doing model airplanes might have got might have piqued your interest yeah. and put it on the radar for you, but it was it already something you were definitely yeah. had an appreciation for. Sounds yeah. like it now it it are it already was actually yeah yeah um, but I mean when I started doing flight test it was just another another level of uh of fun to especially when we when we would do warbirds you know like yeah, yeah. Warbirds, or warbirds it just like it brought all those things together that much more and i never really realized you know um how much uh I, it's i guess it kind of sounds weird to say but like how much uh aviation and and the subject of world war ii like really go together you know um oh, yeah and that's why like we, when I made the when we made the shirts that have the P fifty one on it, I just wanted I wanted a kind of a neutral, um, s just simple image um, to have with with the logo. 
um, neutral as far as like, I didn't want anything that was like, that was too American or, or whatever. Um, although, you know, obviously the P-51 is, is very American. Um, but I, I wanted a plane. I want, I wanted some kind of plane. I felt like, you know, that could be something that looks good as a silhouette, but also could, you know, uh, to the average person who maybe can't recognize the P-51 by its silhouette, you know, yes. um, it could be neutral enough, you know? Um, right. So yeah, it's a, uh, it, that ended up being the, the main thing that I felt really, uh, you know, I, that's the one, that's the image that I really got to. And I think a uh, flight test was probably a very big influence in that, you know, coming to that conclusion. Yeah. And, and I mean, as far as a profile goes, there's no mistaking, uh, a Mustang yeah. uh, with that scoop on, on the, the belly like that. I mean, I remember being a little kid and I didn't know what it was there for. Yeah. You don't know what it's there for, but you, you just recognize this stuff. And, um, I mean, it, people, non airplane people know what Mustangs are. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. I remember I'm going to throw back a little bit. Like we, we briefly discussed it on one of these, um, uh, Test where we were hitting our head against the wall, technically. Yeah. So, um, you guys, you were in a lot of the videos. Do you still pop in over there sometimes? Don't just, you? It's actually been a, it's been a little while. Um, I think August was the last time I was in a video um, because I have a full time job and uh, a wife and two kids, and then this project is like another full time job. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the, the stars kind of have to align, uh, anymore, um, where I'm available and they're in town and like, you know, shooting content and stuff like that. So well, don't yeah, quit. Wow. If, if you, if you get a chance, I mean, so many of us know you from there, you yeah. know, already. Well, and I, I can promise you this. I've already made up my mind that there will not be a, a just a, slow fizzle out um you know if 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 circumstances take me take me elsewhere there's going to be a goodbye for sure i i respect the community um way too much and, and love the community way too much to just kind of slowly disappear um yes just because you know just be, all that to say that uh you know just because I'm not there as much as I used to be does not mean I'm, I'm done. Right. Or, or, or you're not there in, in spirit, right? And absolutely. Anytime right? crashes, I know <laughs> it's like I'm over their shoulder. I'm telling you, you guys, you, you know, really, I mean, it was you and Josh at the beginning yeah. and, and it was really so fun to watch the, uh, I mean, really, it was, I mean, this thing, as you know, has become a monster, yeah. right? I mean, it's so good for aviation in general. Yeah. And you go on and on about that. But the the back and forth between you two uh, was just so engaging. And, and you couldn't turn it off if you wanted to. And, <laughs> And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a, t a combo as well. I mean, it's pilot Ryan and captain Mike. We've been, we've made a lot of videos as well. Not, not like you guys. Uh, and it's a little bit different, but, um, what I'm getting at is the first video I saw and a lot of guys will remember this. I think it was the first video flight test did was that wildcat, wasn't it? Yeah. At the same time, I was still living in Muncie. Me and Mike weren't together yet doing videos, and um, my wife was the one filming for me. And I was I was starting to kind of do some videos. I mentioned this to you. I was starting to do some videos a little bit. I was like upgrading wheels on things to make them scale or or more smoosh smushy or whatever. And um, my wife, we'd fly for like I'd fly for like two or three minutes, and she's like all of a sudden she's snapping like wanting me to land and. I was like, you know, you got to let me fly till the battery dies yeah. back then when I thought that was how you did it instead of a timer. Right. But I remember, I mean, it's very low fi what I was trying to do, like trying to do video. Yeah. And then you guys come out. It's like so slick off the get go. There's two of you and then like a production team. Right. It, it's what it appeared to be. 
Yeah. And and like right out of the gate, it was so it was really so good right away. And there was two of you and you had production people that weren't snapping their fingers telling you to land after two minutes that I actually hung it up. Yeah. You guys were so stinking good. Like I totally <laughs> hung it up. Aww. I did. I hung it up until I didn't mean to and, squash anybody's dreams. Oh no, no. A- until I didn't keep me from flying. I was doing magazine stuff anyway. So uh but and then I moved here and met my guy, um, Mike, and uh he just mentioned kind of off the cuff something about videos one day and yeah. I was like, yeah, funny you should mention that because I tried to make videos once a long time ago with somebody who wasn't very interested, and uh, I kind of hung it up. You know, if my wife was into it as much as yours is, your project, I, I never would have quit. But, <laughs> but j- just for a, uh, that's just a point of reference uh, as far as the the that's been a minute, right? Yeah. I mean, when was that Wildcat video? Must have been what 2010? 2010. 2009? Yeah. 2010. 2010. I think it was October, sometime in October of 2010. So about eight years ago. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, as far as the production goes, that was, that was at the start, um, two guys, um, Chad Capper, um, who developed flight test and, and, you know, it was his, his brainchild. And then Michael Caminetti was the principal photographer and video editor. And, uh, he wrote the music and, um, it was just, those two guys were, were doing all the behind the scenes stuff, all of it. Um, and, uh, they really set the template for what flight tests became. Um, even, even now, I mean, obviously like creatively, um, the guys have, you know, put their own spin on it and everything. And, and we're going in, um, a few different directions as far as, you know, vlogs and, and, and things like that. Um, but the, the standard template for a flight test episode was set by Chad and Michael, you know, eight years yeah. ago. And I think we still use a lot of the music tracks that Michael wrote all that time ago. But, uh, and then as far as me and Josh, it was, um, I think it was just kind of meant to be because, well, he, he's just such a likable and inclusive person um, that it's almost impossible to, to not be your best self when you're around him, you know? And honestly, I feel like Josh and anybody else like could have been a good combo, but I'm glad, I'm glad that it was me. And, uh, the, the, there's a lot of like dynamics between us that are, are pretty funny. Um, (laughs) every plain ointment. Yeah. One of my favorite is, is (laughs) how I can throw him off, um, with like little comments like that. And um, he's gotten he's gotten a little more hip to it um, lately, where uh, I can't sneak things by him as as, as easily anymore. <laughs> but that was like you know, always one of the one of the best things about it was uh, was was just that dynamic. But he's just such a such a teacher, you know. Um, he's got the knowledge, but more important than that, um, he's got the passion, and not just he's not just passionate about him going out and flying. Like he's passionate about about you going out and flying and, and you learning something, um, yes. you know, he's, I think all the best leaders are leaders that will put other people first and put other people on the forefront and give them, um, the advantage. And he, that's exactly what he is. You know, he, uh, he, he just loves people and he loves to, to see people learn and, and just grow closer together in their relationships. And, uh, you know, RC flying is just, is, is the tool that he, that he uses to do it, you know? So I, I think, uh, it's been, it's been great and I'm, I'm so thankful, uh, to be a part of it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I feel like it could have been Josh and anybody else and it, and it would have worked, it would have worked pretty good. Yeah. Well, it certainly didn't hurt having you along and, and, you know, when you, when you share, um, you, that, you know, somebody can stand up in front of a, a video camera and do talking heads and, and speak very concisely and plainly uh, about how to do something and, and almost preach. Yeah. But but there's a difference between somebody who comes alongside you mm-hmm. to do it together. Yeah. And share it uh, with you versus tell you right. how. Um 
I mean, nothing wrong with that, but th it's all perspective. Um, yeah. There's, I, I learned a long time ago to make sure that I just tell people what works for me, mm. not that this is the absolute way to do yeah. it. Yeah. It, it's obviously working because it's and what what's so fun is seeing the um, it is the sharing. It's mm -hmm. it's the tangible of what social media is, but on the ground in the trenches when they're setting up at these events and um, there's all these uh, workshops, these tables and yeah. fathers and sons and daughters and brothers and daughters and dads doing this stuff or, or those community build projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? uh i gotta go to one of these like yeah. what a what a neat thing and it's obviously working you know when they did the crowd fund mm -hmm. for th that first uh day or that week or something i think they did that crowd fund for the uh the park yes and it went crazy yeah um in, in an industry that it, depending on who you ask might be suffering Mm -hmm. There's a community out there that rallies around the flag yeah. of flight test because what they're doing and the accessibility of it. Right. Um, so, yeah, really cool. Yeah. I mean, it went, you know, for a few years, we only um, could hear about uh, whether or not the, that it was working, you know, like, like you're talking about coming alongside someone and, and, and helping them out. Um, you know, we could read stuff on, on the website or on forums and, and things like that. And that's inspirational in and of itself. But when we started doing flight fest and actually seeing people come out and it's funny because like when people first come to flight fest, a lot of them are excited to meet us, you know, to meet Josh and to meet Alex and all those guys. When people come back to Flight Fest, it's because they're excited to see the person that they met last year at Flight Fest and they built this plane together and they've been talking the whole year about what they're going to build this time. Yeah. So it was just, it was so cool to, you know, to put on these events and see it in real life, um, the effects of what, what the, I would say the show is doing, but really it's what the community is doing. And I like that you that you mentioned um, rallying around the banner of flight test because that's kind of that's kind of what it is. It's it's like flight test isn't the thing. The thing it's a conduit for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flight test is just kind of sort of the thing that everybody congregates around, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it's a it's always it's always really cool to experience that. Um, yeah, it's it's funny because people become more um, familiar with us, you know, especially the more that they come out to Flight Fest, um, and it becomes more like family, and we're treated less like celebrity and and more like family, and just like everyone else that's there is treated like family. So, which is which is the goal, you know? Yeah, yeah, because it, it's uh, it, it, I mean, it's flattering when folks are excited but yeah. it's it's uh you, if you were you said it yourself like you're not mr social which i find hard to believe but it's it is kind of funny um it, it's it's just better when you're just a, another dude yeah it, it's funner to be treated that way kind of yeah um i think what's neat too is um you, there's so many facets like disciplines of the hobby some crosses over. Um, I, I'm in what when I when I try to explain it to other people, I, I uh, would I call it more the recreational side. It's not competition like any kind of scale stuff, or or even extreme aerobatics or speed or aerobatic whatever precision. But it's it is kind of nostalgia fun um, recreational side. So most of the guys in my segment i would say um exists somewhere in between general aviation warbirds and jets and a lot of those guys uh, not all of them but a lot of them have the hand builds as well yeah. like the, the the flight the the flight test builds yeah um and and a lot of guys started there and got cut their teeth and have worked their way up and some guys just stay there because that's just who they are right. 
Right. Um, I, I just think it's neat. neat. And one thing I wanted to commend you guys all on as well, too, because I, I, I remember watching this all kind of happen to you guys. Mm. You, you guys, you, you really did get a lot of people's attention and it would have been really easy to. You, you guys did other manufacturers reviews and you still do um, planes and things like more just, you know, manufactured products. Yeah. Um, and it would have been really easy to um, just kind of go that way. But you never really, this is all you guys, never seem to really ever falter from the kind of initial uh, thing right. once you guys discover the, uh, how there was such a, a need and a want yeah. for the, the build it together community of it all. I mean, just so magic. Yeah. Good job. Um, so fun. Yeah. Goodness sakes. It's been an hour. We got to do this again sometime. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple questions that I ask like everybody. Okay. Um, just a few and then we'll, we'll let you go till next time. Cause I think we should do it again. Okay. Um, if there's anything that you wanted to say that we didn't get to lay it on me. Yeah. And also, um, so let's let's talk about because because my listeners are airplane guys. So what was the first plane that you flew? First one that I flew. Yeah, <laughs> man, this is the thing. Like, there's probably like flight test fans out there that know this stuff a lot better than I do. Oh wow, um, yeah, man. Do, okay, so do you remember? Is it easier to remember the first one you flew successfully? No, that doesn't help either because success <laughs> is a very loose term because success could mean that I didn't smash it into a million pieces. And so that that's about all that that's worth. I mean, the Bixler was definitely one of the first um, that I did a complete flight with because I remember uh, Josh teaching me about um, – Oh, great. Now I'm like blanking on the term for it. When you're when you're coming into land and you pull back just a little bit. Flare. Flare. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think I'm sure we all saw that. Like you said, I mean, we yeah. all saw you like cut your teeth and learn with yes. him. Yeah. It was yeah. so fun. I, so I, cool. I, mean, I don't I, I could probably count. I could probably count on one hand the number of times in the first year that flight test was going that I flew. Um a plane for the first time without the cameras rolling. So every time, every time that I was flying, it was like, all right, here you go. Try it, you know, and, and we're in the middle of the episode. So yeah, yeah, it was fun. You no know? pressure, no there pressure. Was a, there was a lot of pressure, but you know, <laughs> I've met a lot of people over the years that, uh, that tell me that from watching from watching me fail, it encouraged them that like, oh, this is, it's okay, you know, and so that means a lot to me. That means uh, I, there was there were so many times where I'm like, I want to do this right. I want to I want to get this. I want to show people that I can do this. You know, I'm tired of people saying, how come he can't fly yet? Um, but <laughs> uh, you know, I'm glad I'm glad that I could be the the person that you know. Uh, that shows people that like, Hey, it's okay. Or, you know, we're going to make mistakes, but here's, you know, here's how you fix your plane after you've crashed it. How, and really it, it is about fun. Yeah. Um, and so if you're having fun learning is a nice way to say it, yeah. <laughs> learning, if you're having fun learning and you keep coming back for more uh, yeah. and, and it, it was just so good to watch that all happen um, you win. I mean, if you're having fun, you win. Um, you know, it, it's the same for anything. If if you if you can't play golf without getting the best score ever, don't play. Right. You know. But yeah. um, so so fun. So so kind of the Bixler is the answer on that yeah, one. So did you I, get any stick time on that Wildcat, or you were just kind of like getting introduced in a way to the yeah. way that it all worked? The famous line. The famous line from that first episode is, "You cannot fly this plane." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah oh so fun but so to, be fun. Hon to be honest with you I, I didn't I didn't even want to I was like I, I I'm terrified of what I would do to this thing right now because <laughs> that that day 
that was my that was my introduction to RC flight. It literally was. Um, my cousin Chad, um, he had called me earlier that week and said, "Hey, I'm starting this new thing. I want you to come and like be a host for it." I'm like, "I don't know anything about that hobby," and he's like, "That's great because that's exactly what I want." And so, um, yeah, it was it was a Sunday afternoon. I had come home from church and took a nap and overslept. And Chad was calling me and be like, hey, are you almost here? I'm like, no, <laughs> not even close because I live half an hour from you. Um, so I just showed up. And he's like, the show is called Flight Test. And I remember when we were filming the opening, you know, hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Josh. Um, there was a TV behind us that had the Flight Test logo on it. I had to like keep looking back at, at it and being like, oh, flight test, flight test, flight test, flight test. This is, this is what the show is called. I have to keep reminding myself of it. Um, so all of that, that whole episode was literally, I just showed up and now I'm thrown into this world of RC flight. <laughs> so good. And and what a vision. So so that's Chad Capper. Yes. Right. That you're talking about. Yeah. So So he had... I kind of noticed this on the periphery, I think. Does he still have a production company? or, or is it, He works in media, yeah. doesn't he? He does. He he produces um, Rotor Riot. Now. Yes. Yeah. Um, he he does not. Um, he sold his production company. It was called Stone Cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he sold the company, and now, as far as I know, I get, I get together with him every once in a while, um, probably like two or three times a year. Um, but as far as I know, Rotorite is like, it's what he's doing now. Yeah. And it, it's doing really good too. And that's yeah. a, that's a quad. Yeah. Not, I really don't, I, I know what they are. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've, I don't, I would like to try that someday. They, it's the racing quads, right? Yeah. 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 And that's a big, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. That's a, yeah. that's an awfully big deal. Really popular, really popular. Um, you know, they early on as well. This is where I really kind of saw the community taking off and supporting each other too. Mm-hmm. Was on those forums uh, you yeah. all had. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit honestly at first. I was like, oh my goodness, another forum? Like no way. Like how's this gonna do? You know? Yeah. Um, it went nuts. Yeah. It went nuts. And yeah. there were guys who were showing up all over the place. Um, first one there on the fumble, you know, to help somebody out. Yeah. And it's just, you saw this community just like kind of grow from the bootstraps. Right. So good. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of times we get credit for um, creating that community. Um, but the community was already there. Um, it just, again, needed something to rally around. And so uh, flight test kind of gave, gave them, a place to get together and to to help each other out because i mean the whole reason why why chad capper started flight test is because when he tried to get into the hobby he did not find it very welcoming and very helpful uh so he wanted to create something that would be the antithesis of that you know yeah so that's that's what it became the people the people are great the people were out there already they just needed a place to get together that's so good. And, and um, you know, I've said it before on shows where I feel like because of the Internet, uh, you, a person can hop on the accelerated learning program if they know where to go to right. find that support and those people that will come alongside you and help you out and, and yeah. those kinds of things. Because I can't even imagine. I mean, you know, you, we were talking October, what? eight years ago was that wildcat video, the beginning yep. of like flight test and my first attempt. And, and I had, I hadn't been flying long, mm. you know? So it's not like I come from, I don't come from gas. I come from the precipice of uh, nickel metal batteries yeah. and going to lipo and okay. brush gearboxes going to uh, direct drive, you know, brushless outrunners right there at that, cusp is where i came in yeah so um but prior to that you had to go to the field you had to go to the hobby shop um you had to be very intentional about trying to seek you had to want to do it pretty bad to be doing it it's just kind of cool how accessible it is now and how if you really know where to look you can kind of you know watch the replay and kind of learn what not to do sometimes. There's kids, man, that are building stuff so much cooler 
than the things that we were doing, you know, when we first started. I mean, there's kids building things way cooler than what, what we're doing now, you know. It's, and some uh, of them came through yeah. y'all's program, basically. Yeah. I mean, uh, Peter, right, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, making – I remember when he got brought on, he's making, you know, his own designs and stuff. And then, and then, you know, a few years later, the dude's making one out of foam yeah. and aircraft aluminum that he flew in for yeah. real. Right. Like that's absolutely bat shirt crazy. <laughs> it's so fun. I was, I was so scared for him when I watched that video. Oh. Oh my goodness. I mean, big lipos. I mean, they were like car batteries. And okay. then there was another guy who did like this monster. Um, there's so many, so much talent um, yeah. around the community there. And then there was one kid built this monster P38 with like legit Fowler flaps and everything. I, I mean, it was something nuts between like six or eight foot wingspan, like flying inside. Yeah, like at, at, at somewhere, it's just mind blowing. I mean, these kids are the future of aerospace. That's that's what's encouraging about it too. Is that you know, it's uh, these these kids. A lot of them, when flight test started, they were kids, and now they're in college, and they chose their their life's course based off of you know what they saw on flight tests. I mean, that's that's crazy to me. It's, but yeah, it's uh, so it's good. Cool. Yeah. Has that and and I didn't I didn't aim to go on off on a tangent, but it kind of fits with the flight and and what we do here. Do you find that your initiative with Memoirs of World War II it, it's it really stands alone from that? Yeah. Have you had any? Have you had a leg up in your pursuit of this initiative because of? your association at all or did you kind of cut some chops in a way do you, do you feel like being in front of the camera and doing all those videos with those guys kind of helped bring you along to be able to actually execute this initiative so well yeah definitely definitely um i've i've always been um in the media world um so i'm, I'm a musician um so i've been recording music for uh man getting kind of close to two decades i think um not that and, old man what's that you not that old How yeah, can you be? Yeah. I'm, just I'm 35 um but uh yeah so uh i've, I've kind of always been involved in that um done a little uh video production mostly in, in front of the camera um but yes yeah absolutely uh learning learning a lot about especially the medium of of youtube um, and kind of, cause that's a different animal on itself and how to, how to present on there. And I'm still learning. I mean, uh, yeah, we're, this, this is definitely a learning curve for sure. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. And the guys at flight test have been super generous, um, with advice, um, on, you know, time of day to post and all, all kinds of different like little tips and stuff like that. Um, and they gave they gave us a shout out as well. They uh, dedicated a a whole uh, episode uh, to memoirs of World War II, which was extremely helpful. Uh, awesome. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's been really beneficial for sure. That's so cool. Um, well, I I, I really want to thank you for coming over to yeah. RC Pilots Lounge number Absolutely. thirteen. We finally did it. We've been trying to hook up for a few weeks, and um, you know, I we we got full time, you know life outside of these uh, pursuits yeah. so it's you know a guy who's doing it squeezing it in it's it didn't he isn't messing around i mean your your heart's in it you you, you love what you do for sure. um, when you find time uh after kids and all go to bed to to do these kinds of things yeah. i'm super excited to see uh the herschel show yeah. Yeah. Um, and everything that you've got coming in the future. Again, everybody, all the listeners here, this one went down a little bit different than you're used to. It's going to present like a live. There's still going to be a live chat, but I will not be able to, I will be able to see your comments, but obviously um, we did a pre-recording of this interview. So um, I'm not going to be able to engage with you or call you out like I always do. And we have a lot of fun doing that. And of course we'll be back next Saturday for the same thing. But I, I just thought this was a, a, a great way to do the interview with Josh 
because I didn't want to take anything away from the interview messing around with you turkeys in the chat box. <laughs> so, um, but I will mess around with you in the chat box during this premiere on YouTube. And this is going to be so cool. And I'm going to build out the description. I want you to check out all the links. Go to memoirs of, uh, you, memoirs of YouTube, I almost said. <laughs> <laughs> memoirs of World War II YouTube channel. Subscribe, smash the bell. Um, check him out. Share these stories because they're so good. They're so good. Uh, check that out. Help support him. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get a shirt. Um, you can support on Patreon. You can buy the merch. Uh, follow him. Stay tuned. He's on Instagram as well. Do you guys have a Facebook page? We do. Yep. Okay. Hit them all. Light them up, boys. Um, because this is definitely a, a cause of merit that's worthy of our support. And I thought this was a great thing to bring to us all because I, I really kind of lump us all together, uh, us aviation nuts. I think we all get service and honor. And I think there's no better way to um, really honor these ladies and gentlemen than yeah. with what Josh is doing right now to archive their stories, their own little uh, version of that story, their personal story. Yeah. Um, because we know the big story, but it all lies really in each one of those people who who really offered to sacrifice it all uh, yeah. for the sake of what's right. right. And and that's that's a um, honorable position to take, regardless of what side uh, you were really ever on. Yeah. So, guys, with that, um, check him out again. Thank you so much for being here on the stream. We will do it again next Saturday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll be up and running for RC Pilots Lounge number 14, as is always the case. Uh, thanks for watching, and this is how we sign off, Josh. We go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thanks a lot. Stick them, monkey pants. All right. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, stick them, monkey pants. It's, there's, it is interesting. There's actually – I'll cut this stuff out. <laughs> um, unless I use a snippet. I'm still recording, by the way, but um, I plan on that being the end.